before I will speak, this video is showcasing you combination of the Delta beam, composite beams, and steel column with reinforcement cage, which is designed as a composite uh, member as well. So this project is uh, done in, uh, in Finland. It's a multi-story column system with a simple supported beam. As you can see, the whole concept in the data beam is to embed the beam into the flow height, and we can do a great easily 12 by 16 and still have a slim flow. Of course, depend on the on the loading situations. We will do the design for you, the final design. We are having plugins uh, for AutoCAD, Revit, Tecla. Um, so you can download those and use on your design and stages. And one of the, uh, another um, benefit is that it is quite lightweight. So it's a steel structure during the installation. And then you will have uh, a casting activity at site which gives you this kind of monolithic uh, casting of the, of the element together. As you hear, this is done with the, with the Holocaust slab, but you can also do it with other different slab systems. So everything will be grounded, uh, or casted with concrete at site, once you cast your, your slab system. And then one of the main aspects on this system is that we have integrated fire solution. So no need of this kind of intersomment painting or, or fire painting or fire board, which is the in standard industry solution when it comes to a steel structure. This is not required when you use our delta beam and composite columns. Unfortunately, the sound is not working, but as you can see here, what is saying is that it's very fast. You can uh, you can erect do floor to floor cycles within five to six days depends on the, on the, on the build up area so let me go through the, the components and and uh, what we are doing basically as you saw in the video uh, we can do continuous beams or columns or single floor column as you see in this slide here um, the benefit with having a single floor column is that the beam itself can be designed as a continuous member, um, it depends on the on the length of the beam. Uh, we can do without girder, or we can introduce this kind of girder connection. Basically, these are chenier, so the moment is zero, so it's a basic, only a, a shear connection. The beam itself is a welded profile. Uh, it has five main parts: bottom plate, top plate, and these two inclined webs. And then you see the fire rebar. This is the, the rebar which will act during the fire situation. Um, you can do also double uh, or multiple level columns. In those cases, the beam uh, mostly will be a simple supported system. Um, the composite column is basically a tube. You can have three different shapes, a round, rectangular, or square. And uh, the designed uh, cage will be installed from the factory, so you will only need to ground it at the, at the site. When you have double floor column or, or multi floor column, the concrete will be pumped from the muscle in the, in the bottom part of the column since we can't allow uh, too high drop of the concrete since it will destroy the, the composition of the concrete. Uh, we can do mostly the all kind of static model of the beam cantilever simple supported or overhanging with the cantilever or continuous beam. Uh, mostly we are covering with this three part, but we can do a fixed connection as well. Uh, it just needs some more, more design detail of the connection of the delta beam made to the, the, the final support system. Um, so when you design normally or traditionally, you typically have a, a drop beam. Either it is a steel beam, where you have your slab system built up on the top flange, and then you have uh, headed studs to achieve your, your composite effect. 
or you can have it with a concrete beam or ledge beam. But what, what is the feature here is that you always have some kind of drop below the slide. So combining uh, the best of steel and concrete, it means compression and tension in the steel, we can in the most case embed the beam height into the floor build-up area. And it allows us to have this kind of slim floor structure. Um, let's go through some of the, the three stages once we design the beam. Um, we have erection stage. In this situation, it's only a steel member. And then we have final and fire stage. In these two situations, we are utilizing the composite action between the beam, the steel beam, and the infill concrete. So what you see here is the, is the effective section. As you might have noticed, the beam has this characteristic to having a huge web holes. So these web holes are not taken into account once we are designing the beam. Once you apply your slab, it will have local bending of the ledge. This will be taken into account once we design the global design of the beam. So moment and both direction will be taken into account. Once the beam is casted, you are actually achieving the composite effect. And this composite effect is enabled by the shear double connection, which is acting through these big web holes, and the arch effect of the concrete and the inclined web. What you see here, the, the highlighted with stipulated with the red mark, this is our effective section in composite uh, um, understanding. And this is what we take into account. So it's, uh, it's like, as you can see, it's, it's important that the beam is, is fully uh, casted. During the fire, um, we have done many fire tests to prove our calculation method. But if I will say a few words on, on, on the methodology, uh, how we uh, approach it is basically we have done, first of all, uh, FM analysis to understand the temperature uh, variation throughout the beam height. So the exposed plate, which is the, the bottom plate of the, of the delta beam, will reach, depends on the fire rate from, 11, from 900 to 1200 Celsius degree. In those situations, you have utilized your maximum, the leaf string is zero, more or less. So we are applying the fire rebar in the cold zone to substitute the Lawson bottom plate. Same methodology is uh, 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 applied when it comes to the composite columns. So these steel cages, which is embedded into the, to the tubes, are placed in a cold zone. So once during the fire case, the, the tube itself is not taken into the design. Depends on the thickness, uh, but uh, when you have around 800 degrees, you can utilize, I believe it was around less than 10% or 5% of the, of the yeast change of the bottom layer. We have done many tests to, to verify and, and to also to confirm that our uh, calculation method are reliable and also being calibrated. The latest test we have done actually is uh, just been released, our, our white paper document is done in Germany 2020 this year. Uh, furthermore, we have done also tests in US on the UL lab where we have obtained up to four hours fire rating. And there has been also done similar tests in, in, in Sweden and Denmark in 2009. And more tests are, are planned in the coming future, especially in the UL lab. Uh, next year we will publish the, the documents so I, as we call it white paper from this research. So once you design the beam uh, according to our methodology, you don't need to fire protect the visual part. So most of the beam is already embedded into the infill concrete. So the visual part is only the bottom plate. What we can do or help you during your design uh, in the initial stage is one is to provide you this kind of data beam capacity table. This table provides you for our standard sections, the maximum moment, positive and negative, and the shear capacity. 
along with the bending stiffness for the cracked and uncracked section. Furthermore, you can also find uh, uh, capacity for the for the fire situation as well for the mentioned mentioned uh, resistance for moment and shear. Now let me take you through the design concept through our program called Delta Beam Select. Let me, are you seeing the browser or are you only seeing my presentation? Only the presentation. Okay, let me stop. I will present the Probably you are seeing the. Um, are you seeing the web page, Reza? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So this is our web page called paper.com or you can pay to you a, a, a as well. For the designers tab, uh, here you can find the Delta Beam select. If you click here, you can use it uh, by registering it, or you can use it without non-registered uh, your user account. Um, if you register, you can save your files. Uh, this is the main difference in this program. So let's go to uh, United Arab and click the next. So in this page, you can choose your live load category things. Uh, most of our design are based on Unicode. So these categories are based on the Unicode definition of different live load categories. So A, is residential, B is office, C, one to C, five different types of, of uh, meeting areas where you have fixed or non-fixed seats. So let's, in our example, let's go through office. You will go to the next tab. In the left side, you have a project case. And in the right side, you have the case properties. So once you have chosen your location, which you can also change again later, or your building usage, you can change it here as well. These are the C1, C5 different uh, parameters. And then this is the beam. At the moment, you can only uh, design a single supported beam. The program is being developed further, so you will get more and more um, options. What you can do at this point is you can have a slab on one side or both sides. You can choose your infill concrete grade and then fire rating. We can do fire rating in this program up to two years. So let's take one more fire and here you can apply your, your beam length. Once you have applied the parameters, these boxes turn into green, so blue with the tick mark. The next missing part is the slab. Here you have right and left. So here you choose your hollow core, thickness of the hollow core, and top to what kind of the things on the screen. You can predefine or you can use the, uh, these are the predefined values. You can also change the, the self weight if you want. If you want to add, uh, let's say, simulate a uh, cast in situ, so you can simply just replace the value. So let's say this floor is 200 hollow core and the length is, is 5 meter. And the left, right one is, you will keep it as it is. The next one is the load. Uh, same point are, are automatically added. What you can add here for the, the permanent loads, you can add either area load, point load, or line load. Let's keep it as it is. Let's go to the variable load. Let's add one more load combination. Let's say a A1 line load. And you change it to line load, and then you can put your values. Where it's starting from, let's say it's from five meters, and it's also a minus 15, so it's an uh, inclined loading. Once you have put all your uh, loading uh, information, you just simply press the button calculate. This, as, may, as you can see, the program name is Delta Beam Select. So this software allows you to, in the initial stage, 
to define what kind of section you need for your given loading parameters. So once the design is done, you go to the resource. Here, the software will provide you three different options. One is uh, normal, uh, narrow section, but a slim floor. Here you can see in the left side, we have a smaller hollow core, and here you have a higher source of hollow core. And then we have wide option, if you want to have wider beam, or we have also, um, because what happens when you increase the beam height, you increase the moment of inertia, it means we can use less steel in the beam. So this is the most economically uh, uh, solution. If you can have a small kind of drop in the project, this is suitable. So basically, once you have designed, you will just create the report. It will give you a brief information on the structures, uh, the loadings, and the, um, the, the internal utilization of the forces for moment and shear. That's what I want to present here. Let, goes back to the presentation itself. You are seeing the presentation, Vesa? Yes, I can yes, see it. Okay. You can continue with the... Yeah, so yeah, let me yeah. go on with, uh, with the stud rails. So we, we have stud rails depending on the design code called Armata in, in ACI design and PSB in, in European design, but the product is the same. So let's have a short uh, video also in, the, in this product in the beginning, so you'll get the over, uh, overview of the, of the solution, and then we'll go to the details for it. So start rails, as, uh, as you may know, it, it's to prevent the punching failure in the slabs. So if you have a, if you have a, a flat slab a column system, you can... Uh, you can decrease your slab thickness or avoid the column drops or capitals uh, with using the headed anchors uh, with uh, stud rails. So it gives you higher capacity. That's why you are able to reduce the thickness of your slab or foundation. So, of course, uh, similar benefits like with uh, you saw with Delta Beam with uh, precast floors. This is for cast in situ floor, so you can uh, you can reduce your floor to floor height. And, of course, uh, optimize the building height or building volume. So, here, yeah, it can be peripheral arrangement or it can be can be orthogonal uh, arrangement of the of the studs depending on the design so this is what you basically saw also on the on the video so with uh, with stud rails you can optimize your slab thickness if uh, if the governing case is punching uh, failure and also the same thing uh, we have to remember, it can be used in foundations where it also gives a huge benefit. You don't need to excavate so, so deep, you can uh, reduce the excavation depth. And also, if you don't need to excavate so much, you can uh, you don't need to transport soil out from the site so much. So it gives, uh, gives double benefit there. Yeah. So this is our product. Uh, we have double uh, double-headed uh, studs, which are then uh, connected to the flat bar rail. And this rail has no structural uh, purpose; it's just to keep the spacing. So we are uh, we are able to deliver you the full stud rails already welded on our factory to the site. And then it's easy to install. You don't need to install single studs, but it's the full full rail what you can install directly on the on the slabs. Uh, this is uh, to give you an idea why it gives you higher capacity compared to the stirrups or or other systems. It is because of the anchoring of the of the head is much stronger than uh, bended uh, shear link. 
that's why also in the codes you can see here this is taken from ACI code you can uh, use 30 33 percent higher uh, factor for for headed anchors these are the failure modes uh, normally involved with uh, punching CR design so you have uh, of course, negative reinforcement uh, has to be designed in case A. Then B is your strength of the studs. The, the, the steel, uh, steel strength of the studs is sufficient. C means that there, you cannot space those studs too wide. You, you have to follow the code requirements for the spacing of the studs. Otherwise, it can, uh, the strut and time model will not work. Then uh, you have to provide uh, enough uh, length of the rail that your uh, shear, shear stresses in the slab are distributed uh, in uh, long enough or, or wide enough area. And delamination means that your uh, length of the stud uh, has to be sufficient reaching from top mesh to bottom mesh. And finally, we have this maximum resistance of slab, which cannot be exceeded. And this depends on your system, whether it's perhaps or, or shear links or headed anchors, uh, stud rails. So general design, I'm sure some of you are aware, but uh, let's go it briefly through. So you first check the basic perimeter of the of the column punching, and if it uh, if it's uh, higher than the punching load, you don't need any punching shear reinforcement. But if it's not, then you need to add punching shear reinforcement and uh, reanalyze again with uh, extended perimeter, which uh, later called outer critical uh, perimeter. And then again, you will check if the shear stresses in the slab are, uh, are sufficient without any reinforcement, then you're okay. But if not, you need to iterate, do this iteration here. And then finally, you arrive to the sufficient uh, start rail combination and uh, which satisfies your, your slab design. And here we got the code. Uh, this is from our software, the code for the, for the start rails. As, uh, as you saw with the uh, column connection and with Delta Beam as well, we have also tested this, uh, this application. All, most of our applications are, are based on tests and we have uh, test results, uh, so we can be confident that these are, these are working solutions. And this uh, start rail also has been tested extensively. Uh, now, yeah, after we'll go through this uh, design software, where, where I will explain more of these uh, benefits for, the, for that system. So, basically, you will share your screen, I think it's better. Yes, yes let, me, let me share the screen. I will stop presenting. Yeah, let me know if you can see the screen. Yes. So this is the starting screen after you have downloaded the uh, software. What uh, you can go to this website, what Nick was uh, showing, and I think it was also mentioned in the invitation email. So click on that, download the software, and then uh, you can start using. So today we will check this column connection, which is the first module here. And after that, we'll go for this punching shear reinforcement module. And you can also go and select the delta beam select through this fiber design. Yeah. Correct, right. correct. So this delta beam select, you can click here and it will guide you to this website what you saw from uh, what Nick was presenting you earlier. So this is the overview in the beginning. So it simply goes so that you start filling this information from uh, left to right. So first you have the project settings, project details, uh, design codes, uh, all, the, uh, all the parameters here for the project related. I will, I will not fill it now because I can see we are uh, soon running out of time. So let's go to the next one, which is base structure. So you choose the concrete trade in the base structure. Then uh, if you if you have aggregate size or uncracked concrete, uh, if it's known for you, you can uh, you can you can cross check it there. But uh, normally, you you design it for cracked concrete. 
Base column means pedestal if uh, if you don't connect directly to the foundation uh, slab, you can uh, cross-check the base column, so you will have pedestal here. Or if you design a column to column connection, you, you should use this option here. But I will go go to go to this flat uh, flat foundation option, so we will see the headed anchor bolts and uh, and uh, concrete failure modes, which is calculated here. Then you will uh, you will specify the thickness of your footing, uh, the size of your footing. Oops, sorry. Let's put two meters by two meters, six hundred thick. And then automatically updates the, the view here, the 3D view. Next is uh, your column option. So you can, uh, if you only want to calculate the anchor bolts, uh, you have a steel column. You can choose that as an option. But uh, here we will go now through concrete column. Uh, column grades. You need to choose your uh, concrete grade, what you're using for the column. If it's a circular column, can be checked from here. But uh, let's do rectangular today. I will choose the size for 500 by 500. Uh, crowding thickness. Column height here, uh, when you analyze the erection uh, state loadings, there is an automatic uh, wind load uh, calculation. So if, if you specify your column height here, you can uh, you can use that one. I will put here 10 meters. So, so it is. Uh, you can say three three story column even it is ten meters. And this option here is if your column position is not in the middle of the foundation, you can offset the uh, offset the column uh, like you can see here. This has impact for the for the concrete failure calculations. Uh, depends of your edge distance here. Okay, next step. Column shoes and anchor bolts. So basically, you need to have a you need to have a guess in the beginning that what could be your column uh, column connection sizes. So I will keep this uh, HPKM30. You can choose it from here, for starting from 16 all the way to 52. And here, if you have a pedestal or column connection, you should use this long anchor bolt type. But as you can see with, uh, with the flat foundation, you are not able to fit it here. So I will choose the headed anchor type. This, this option here is, uh, let me change the view to top view. So if you if you want to offset the column, column shoes inside the column, you can do it from here. As you can see, when I change the values, it will, it will offset the column uh, shoes inside the column. And of course, this has impact for the calculations later because you will reduce your uh, effective lever arm on the on the moment calculations also here you are able to choose not only four connection items but uh, you can you can actually choose uh, the number you want these are just predefined options but if you choose the last one with uh, n in the middle you can specify how many shoes you want to have in uh, in uh, each side Okay, then uh, we come to the loading cases. So on the left side, you can see the final stage loading uh, inputs. And on the right side is the erection state loading inputs. So now if you specify this column height here, uh, then you have to specify your wind loads, wind load data, what is your wind velocity here? Let me put, for example, 40 meters per second. The rain category, uh, is it in the open sea area or if it's in the city area, it, it varies. And then structural uh, factor according to, in this case, in Eurocode. And if you want to uniform distribute, uh, uniform distribution of wind load during the column height, you can cross check it here. And then as you can see, it's all still zeros. But if you click these wind loads and self weights here for both directions, X and Y, it will then give you automatically the values for the for the erection states uh, design. If you want to input your own values here, 
you can uh, you can do it here if you have uh, some different uh, loading combination during the reaction stage it can be done here same similarly you can do it for the final stage loadings so you can input your values here and uh, minus indicates uh, compression here for the for the connection so if you want to input the positive value, you need to cross-check this tab here. And then you can put moments in X direction, Y direction, and then uh, shear force in X and Y. Uh, depends which, uh, if you have multiple uh, loading cases, uh, you, can, uh, you can also choose the loading case you want and change the values from here. Same for the column sizes, you can modify it directly on the 3D view. Okay, I have also an option if, uh, let's say, you want to export uh, column reactions from the software, you can uh, directly copy and paste it to this uh, software. So I will, I will take these uh, sample combinations from here, I will copy it. And I will go here, click uh, on this uh, on this spot here, and uh, right click and paste. So it will automatically copy these cases here after this first case. Then, if you want to specify, this is not uh, mandatory but optional. You can put also your column reinforcement. Let's say you have a corner bars of 20 and then you have additional bars on each side for, for dia 20. So now we have 8, uh, 80, 20 here in this column. Uh, column uh, reinforcement data, I think 460 is commonly used. And later on we need to calculate first and if required we can add some additional uh, reinforcement here for the for the anchor poles for, for the foundation. But let's uh, click calculate now. So it will calculate our uh, cases. And then we will be able to see, see the results here. Okay, first step here is the resistance uh, curves, uh, moment uh, axial force uh, resistance curves. You can see here the column uh, resistance curve with dashed line. And you can see here the joint capacity with the uh, solid line. So as you can see, it's very close to each other now with this reinforcement and this uh, connection item combination. This is the interaction between the X and Y. And these are separately for resistance X and uh, resistance curve for Y. So here, this is uh, showing you the critical case. But if you want to see any other case, uh, with this uh, interaction curve, you can you can choose it from here. Next step is the final stage. So this is your load input data here, and these are the uh, these are the bolt forces for uh, for your joint. So as you can see here, the compressed area is uh, is here below this uh, red line in this case, and uh, this is the center of uh, compression area here and he, these are the bolt forces accordingly so you can see if you analyze this one uh, bolt position one and two which also you can see here when you move your mouse here so bolt uh, bolt position one and bolt position two here are in tension because it's a positive value here and Bolt position three and four are in uh, compression. As you can see, number four is almost on the uh, almost on the neutral axis, so it has very little uh, compression here, six uh, kilonewtons only. But uh, number three is here uh, deep in the compression zone, which has a much higher compression force there. And then you see the utilizations here, acting shear forces in the bolts. We are utilizing the joint uh, uh, friction resistance. So after uh, friction resistance, these are the bolt uh, acting shear forces for the bolts in this case, and resistance and utilization here. And uh, as you know, you you cannot only check the 
tension or compression and the shear, but you also need to check the combination in, uh, in case you have tension and, uh, and shear force in the bolt. And uh, here is the interaction results. And the same you have for all the loading cases here then later on. What you have analyzed. Uh, I didn't, uh, now concrete failure check didn't come because I didn't choose the code I want to use for the concrete failure check. So let me choose that one and uh, reanalyze it so then we'll see also the concrete failures. Okay, now now you can see here this concrete failure checking. So it's checking all these uh, previously mentioned uh, failure modes for pull out, for concrete cone splitting failure, and so on. And it will give you this uh, give you these utilizations for for each loading combination and each loading case. If you need to add some uh, reinforcement here, let's say we want to put. Uh, this this uh, gray text here, uh, for example, hanger reinforcement for tension force. So this indicates what uh, what it applies for. So you have tension uh, stirrups, as you can see here now. So now we added four T10 uh, uh, stirrups for tension to prevent the uh, anchoring uh, failure here. And same for the erection stage. That you have erection stage loading, but here, of course, all the shear force and all the axial force will be transferred through the through the bolts. There is no compression capacity from the crowd yet, or or joint uh, friction for the shear. Same here, and same concrete uh, failure modes are are checked here as well. So now we have uh, we have failure here because of the splitting uh, splitting failure. Uh, this is the interaction between the split and the uh, tension and the shear force. So we need to need to design. Uh, I can see the splitting failure had the highest utilization here. So I I cross check this design all the cases for splitting reinforcement. And now it's it's satisfied. And this is basically basically it. If uh, later you want to go and uh, reanalyze with different shoes, if uh, if it failed from the first time, you can you can choose different uh, shoe combination. Or maybe in this case, maybe we can even reduce the size or put. Uh, with different kind of uh, setups, so smaller size but more numbers. This also also can be analyzed. And one one nice feature also here, if if you have similar columns, you can uh, you don't need to start from the scratch, but you can actually copy the same loading case, go to this project, and then paste it, and then uh, then rename the case. So let's say this will be column two, and maybe the difference is that this is with uh, with the pedestal, like this. And here we have the have the second column. Then how to print out the results? Go to the window and cases overview, where you can see all your if you specified more than uh, two columns, so you can see all your column cases here. You can choose the active case. Now I have chosen one. Here's the second, and then you can print out the results. Just choose uh, control, uh, sorry, the shift, and then uh, all your cases. What you want to print out? Choose the re report type, whether short, long, or custom. You can uh, you can choose all the cases you want, and then uh, print. So it will create you this print overview for for all the chosen cases. And then you can print the results as a PDF or, or even physical print if you want. So here, first it gives you the summary of all the cases. And then uh, all the details of these uh, cases are, are shown below. 
all the parameters we have input uh, are, are here in the results. I can see we are running a little uh, long time, but let me quickly show you this uh, punching shear reinforcement. So you can go and change the module from, uh, from this button here. I will go to this uh, punching uh, reinforcement module. <coughs> Okay, so here we are in a bunching shear reinforcement module. Let me show you the example with the AZI building code. And with this code, we are uh, we are having this armata as a as a default. It will give you the imperial units, but you can choose it to change it to SI units, metric units here, and similar idea here that uh, you start filling in the information from top to bottom first specifying the material for the slab then uh, choose your uh, shape of the column rectangular square or uh, circular here and then the position of the column whether it's in the middle or it's in the corner or on the edge you can you can choose as you want and then if it's a if it's a slab or if it's a foundation is here and then you can fill in the information for your slab thickness what is your column size uh, cover for the concrete cover for your reinforcement this is a good feature in this software that you can specify also the openings so if you want to add an opening here you can see that the uh, it uh, takes it into account in the design depends of your location of the opening uh, your design may fail and you can choose the uh, input location uh, with x and y here or you can drag drag and drop it here in the 3d view also the size can be changed then uh, seismic requirement as per the aci code if you want to click it here do the exact calculation or or else you can just use the default values then you specify your punching load what is your uh, axial load in the punching then uh, design moments this is the if you if you use softwares uh, you should check the unbalanced moment here this is the difference between the top and bottom column uh, moment so this is what they call unbalanced moment. You should input it here. And then your reinforcement bars here. Uh, these are from the from the imperial units, but number 20, I believe, is 20 millibar. And then phasing of the of the bars. And in this case, you can see it specifies uh, automatically with the rails. You don't need to hit any calculate buttons uh, here. And it will give you the data of the of the rails. So if I want to, let's say, for example, remove my opening here, I can go here, click and delete button. Do you want it? Yes. And then it will give you different uh, setup for the start rails. In case your load is too high, it cannot be. It cannot be satisfied it will give you warning that your maximum resistance of the slab is exceeded so you in this case of course you either need to change your loading or your geometry so you can use a thicker slab or you can use higher strength of concrete so or yeah or changing loadings then these are the options you, you are go for and this is the, giving you the output for the basic critical section as you remember this basic critical section is the is the one shown here close to the column with uh, when your uh, when your basic critical section uh, concrete strength is exceeded then you have to have uh, uh, shear reinforcement there and if the upper limit value is exceeded then it will give you the warning for maximum resistance of the slab is exceeded and then same parameters for outer critical section here so idea of course is that you after these dots the shear uh, stresses in the concrete slab are 
low enough that you don't need to have any CR uh, reinforcement in the slab anymore after the stats. And same parameters you can see from here. Similar settings for the for the copying for here you can uh, you can copy this case and uh, and paste it here as a second case uh, are applied in this module as well and the printing preferences are, are exactly the same so you choose the cases from here and document settings and if you want to print the calculation and schedule and also the order list are possible to print here you can also export these cases to AutoCAD. So if you want to get the detail in AutoCAD, you can you can do it from here. Or if you want to print a schedule as an Excel table, you can you can also choose it from here. I forgot to mention in this uh, Baco Designer column connection module, you also have the option to print it as a AutoCAD drawing. The connection detail in the AutoCAD to make it easier for the design and the drafting. I think, yeah, that was a little bit extra time already, but uh, but uh, thank you. Yeah, now we have been speaking for, for one hour. I hope you still are still are awake, guys. Um, so please shoot us with questions. Um, we are more than ready to, to reply as, as best as we can. Hello. Yes. Yeah, this is Vivek here. Actually, thank you. And uh, it's I'm sure this is a very good. Uh, it's a new topic for the students, and it will be very interesting also to take them in uh, future projects. Uh, I have actually some few doubts regarding the same, like uh, bolted kind of column connections. You were saying, now uh, during mm -hmm. the weather erection, actually, I, there was a spacing in between the base slab and uh, uh, the base plate column base. Uh, why it is there actually? Any particular reason for that? Uh, space between the foundation and the column. Yes. Yeah, this is because you, you have to have some tolerance to set your uh, height level. And also okay. you have to have a uh, crowding there to, to have the actual... Uh, if, if you directly place the column on top of the foundation, it will, it will not really work uh, because it, it's normally not... Uh, Fully flat, so your okay. uh, your stresses can concentrate. So you have to have this non-screen crowd between the between the elements. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, I'll, at the end, then it will be grouted. Joint grouted will be provided, right? Correct, correct. That, okay. that uh, they will do on the site is so joint crowding. Okay, okay. Uh, and as for delta being, it's basically a hidden beam itself, right? Yes, yes. It's a hidden uh, and uh, and at the steel composite column, it's a steel composite beam, right? You mean yes? So both are, are composite, yes. Yeah. Okay. And the tension, uh, it, it, tension beams are also provided at the very base uh, bottom. Tension, tension, tension bars. They are provided at the bottom. Of yeah, the inside okay. the beam, there is this. Uh, these are actually not. Only for tension, maybe Nick can explain. Yeah, it's uh, also yeah. for some other purpose. Okay, fine. So fine yeah, yeah, so in the normal case, the bottom plate will uh, will take the tension forces. Yeah. Um, and in, in, in the fire situation, the rebar which we have inside the section, it will also help in the normal situation. Mm -hmm. um, but since they are closer to the natural axis, the contribution for the ULS design is, is less compared to the bottom plate. But they are they are helping also in the in the normal design for the normal okay. cases. Okay. So if there is a hogging thing also you can can we provide this bar at the top or yes, yes we are doing it's very good you ask this question because as you can see here uh, what is happening in this junction between column and B connection we are having in this case a holes on the on the web plate. In mm -hmm. some cases, the beam can be wide, so the hole will be on the top plate. So we will reduce the the section locally. So what we do, 
what we do, we will either apply an additional steel plate on the top or reinforcement, or reinforcement running here in the, in the top side, outside of the section, basically. Okay. So, a lot of local modification will be done according to the, the internal forces. In the so, it's all uh, customizable? Huh? Yes, yes. These beams are not uh, a universal section. These are always tailored for the project. Okay. So we don't we don't have it in our storage where we take it down and cut into the required length. So we can have various combination of different plate thickness of bottom plate can vary from six milli to fifty milli. Okay. And top plate can vary from five to to fifty milli, and the weight plate can also vary from five to twelve milli. Okay. So if our internal forces are greater than the, the dimension mentioned, then we will do additional local reinforcement of the beam. Okay. Okay. And uh, as for the seismic loading, uh, in the software, do that uh, in uh, maybe in columns, the bolted column condition design, actually the uh, seismic loads are also considered. Seismic loading. Seismic Seismic loading combinations you can also input there uh, from your. Uh, normally, this is exported from uh, from the softwares like STAD or or ETAPS. Okay. Uh, as far well, uh, is it response vector design or uh, can we go for a dynamic uh, like uh, nonlinear time history analysis or anything of that sort? We can. No, the, this software only for uh, static linear. Design. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you for clarification. Thank you. And if, if later you have any questions, uh, you can always contact us directly as well. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, I'll write you. Uh, later in this, uh, after this presentation, something has up, uh, you can contact us. This is an open source, open source software. No? We can actually work on this, right? Yes, it, it's a free software. You can uh, download it and, uh, and use it. Uh, there is no cost involved. Okay, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you just need to register because we are doing. Uh, quite often the update, adding new features. So okay. in order to, to get those uh, updates, you need to register with your email. That's the, that's the basic requirement. Okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. So today's audience, are they from uh, from your Dubai faculty or, or do we have? Uh, there are many actually. Um, I can see a few familiar names, but also others as well. Okay. Yeah, I'll hand over to Sharad, uh, Ananka, Alina, Raj. Uh, do we have any more questions? Students, anyone? Okay. So Hello, I'm guessing there's no. I have a question. Uh, my name yeah. is Abhilak. Yes, please. So, uh, in this uh, emerging trend, you have taught us like today something very new apart from what we know and we would like to know what advice you have for the upcoming engineers in this field sector uh, in this uh, like you know changing times i think uh, in general uh, it's always good to follow the new trends and see what uh, what new options you have to to go forward with, uh, you don't always need to stack into these uh, old uh, traditions what uh, what has been used in the past, but uh, how you could do it more effectively in the future. And uh, and this, this system which we have presented, uh, definitely it's, it's new for you guys. Uh, what I can say about Delta Beam, it has been existing more, more than 30 years. Um, and we have 15,000 reference projects. We have also in, uh, in, in India, in, uh, in Chennai region, a few reference projects where Delta Beam has used. And we have also um, same, this uh, punching reinforcement has been also used for one huge campus project in, in Chennai as well, where they were having transfer slabs. Um, so, People are adopting it in in this part of the region as well, uh, because more and more uh, people are um, having open mind when it comes to reduce the labor cost, labor intensity at the site, uh, because everyone wants to do fast, uh, easy and safe installation. 
of the, of the project. So these uh, applications enhance those objectives. Um, and uh, one of the reasons these applications are, are developed in, in the Northern Europe is because the time period or the building period is, is very short due to the, due to the cold climate. So when they have this window of five or seven months of building, they want to go fast. So that is one of the reasons you see these kind of mechanical connections and prefabricated component. So it, it's like a legal uh, wise system. But at the same time, we need to ensure the integrity of the building, especially when it comes to the connection. And this is where our main, uh, main know-how and competence uh, lies. We are doing these kind of white papers whenever we have uh, done some kind of test with any kind of authority or universities. Uh, the latest test I showed you was the fire test done in uh, close cooperation with the, with the German authority to approve our system in the, the fire case. Uh, but moreover, we do cooperate with different universities as well. So if your students in your faculty would like to understand more about our product or they want to do some research or they are uh, masters or, or bachelors, you are more than welcome to contact us. We can supply you uh, some products where you can do uh, test in your lab if you have a lab facility. So we, we are more than welcome to also to provide our know-how so we can uh, already from, from the early stage try to uh, implement our, not only our system, but moreover to educate the also other way and then doing conventional cast and structure, cast and structure. Thank you, sir. Uh, that was a really interactive Q&A session that we had. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Vivek, sir, uh, to speak a few words. Hello? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Hello, can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, both of you, actually, uh, for a wonderful session. And it was a very, I am both, none, neither, okay. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Actually, there are some technical problems here, sorry. We, we hear you clearly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, providing a very detailed explanation of this top, new topic to our students. And uh, I'm sure. Uh, our students might have enjoyed it and they will take forward and uh, I appreciate the last thing which you would like to provide us an opportunity to uh, extend our research and uh, to or collaborate with you people to do more uh, productive outputs, to give pro more productive outputs and uh, we will look forward to that and uh, and thank you Skyline for uh, actually organizing this beautifully and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, you're welcome, you're welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I would like to invite any other faculty member who would like to share their views on the presentation today. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Sri Lakshmi. I'm a faculty from Civil Engineering Department. Uh, thank you so much. It was a wonderful opportunity for all of us uh, to get to know something which is new, uh, especially for our students in this difficult time. It's uh, necessary for them to acquire special skills uh, and you know get to know new topics, softwares, etc. So thank you so much. This was a wonderful opportunity. Thank you, both Niranjan and Mr. Vesa. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. Most welcome. Thank it's you, Dr. Vivek. Our, our, our uh, our honor to be presenting our system. So. We thank you as well for giving us the opportunity to interact with you guys. <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Vivek and Sri Lakshmi ma'am for sharing your thoughts on the session. Uh, on behalf of the Civil Department at Bits Pilani Dubai campus, I would like to thank Mr. Nirajdan and Mr. Vesa for preparing a very detailed uh, yet easy to understand presentation about the software Pico Designer for explaining its multidimensional purposes and functions, and of course, for answering all our queries related to it. 
I would also like to express gratitude to the department head, head of civil engineering at BITS Blani Dubai, our HOD Dr. Vivek B and Ms. Lakshmi Babu, faculty in charge for their efforts to make this session possible. Thank you for your continued support. I also take this opportunity to thank each and every one of our viewers who joined us today and engaged in conversation with the speakers. Your presence is what marks the fulfillment of this event's purpose. A special mention to Skyline Association and all its members that helped to conduct this lecture of the Industrial Experts Lecture Series. Deepest gratitudes towards all other persons who worked to put together this lecture. We hope you had a good session with us today and hope to see you again for the remaining session of the series. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. All right. If you don't have any further, we will, uh, we will end the session then. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.